I had a great time serving at SWAP, um, and one great connection I made was with Dick Aldifer, who was working in my group. Um, Dick couldn't be here this week, but he left a message for me to share. He titled it, To Elkhorn and Back. Back in the fall of 2017, I drove John Martin back to Elkhorn, West Virginia, to visit his son Lee and his wife Peg Martin, who are the MCC coordinators for SWAP. I found it interesting and felt I would like to return to volunteer there sometime. That opportunity presented itself this past spring when Mariah announced that the MYF was planning a summer work project to Elkhorn, West Virginia. I said I'll check with Mariah to see if she could use some help, as to which she said great. I could follow up on returning at this location. Another goal I had was to learn to know the younger generation at Parkview Mennonite Church. Both goals accomplished. I served as painting crew leader at one site. The crew was Sarah Keim, Harriet King, Reuben Mast, Lucas Early, Lucas Wanger, and Mariah split between the two groups that Parkview provided. Our group worked two projects. The first was a house that was redone on the exterior and needed to be painted. We painted it with two coats of paint, complete with ladders, scaffolds, and wasps. We did a great job. We then painted one room inside the house. We never did see the homeowner as she was working. The second was an older house that needed some external painting and a new bathroom inside needed painting as well, as some cleaning up in a carport storage area. No wasps here. There was plenty of activity in the house in the evenings, 25 kids and young adults talking, playing games, and debriefing. Mariah did a group activity on several evenings called Pow Wow How. Pow, what did you find challenging that day? Wow, what did you find exciting that day and exhilarating? And how, how did you see God at work? Yours truly was heading to bed by nine. I did enjoy listening and being present as much as possible. Being the oldest person here, I felt accepted and welcomed. Someone even sent a lawn chair out at the job for me to sit and watch, <laughs> which I didn't use. <laughs> Parkview, MIF, and sponsors are really great people. I considered it a gift to be able to participate with them in this project. I didn't really have an idea of what to expect going into SWAP, but as soon as we drove into our homeowner's driveway, I knew it would be a positive experience. Driving in, we saw five signs that said welcome. This was a huge difference from what we had seen driving through the rest of West Virginia. It's almost a rarity to find a house without a no trespassing sign. Throughout the process of building their porch roof, we got to know the homeowners, Bo and Joanna. Bo helped us every step of the way during the building process. One thing that really stuck out to me while talking to him was about his granddaughter. We were talking about his family, and he mentioned that his youngest granddaughter had autism. He simply said, she just thinks differently. She's real bright, though. They both lived in McDowell County for their whole lives. Despite the little they had around them, they don't take anything for granted. Joanna spends much of her time in her garden, which is beautiful. The last day, we walked around her yard for 30 minutes while she named all her flowers and told us where they came from. You could tell it is her passion by the way she smiled. She kept saying, it is unreal. Yes, unreal how many no trespassing signs there are. Unreal how far they have to drive to buy groceries. Unreal how there are nice homes that have been abandoned for years. Unreal how a week in West Virginia can open your eyes to a new culture and new people. Well, as, as Hannah mentioned, uh, our homeowner, Bo, and his wife, Joanne, were extremely welcoming. And uh, turns out, Bo actually had quite a bit of experience with construction. So he actually just jumped right in and helped us. Um, and, you know, he wasn't overbearing. He, he gave us some guidance. And I think we were all really appreciative of that. Um, but I think we weren't necessarily expecting that. A lot of us had this preconceived notion that maybe our homeowners can't help themselves or they don't know a whole lot because, you know, we had this idea about poverty and about people who are in that kind of situation. 
Um, so I think that was one stereotype that was broken down. But also, I think a lot of us came into the week expecting or, or anticipating what we can give to these people. And while that was part of our service, another important aspect that we often overlook is what they have to offer to us. And not only what they have to offer to us, but remembering that we need to be in a position of humility and remember that these people have wisdom and joy and they're not just helpless people that we need to come in and swoop in, swoop in and save them. And I think we were all really struck, struck by that with Bo and Joanne's welcoming attitude and willingness to help and how they opened up their home to us. So I think, yeah, I think we, uh, we all definitely broke out of our comfort zones a little bit and we all had an amazing experience with that. So we were uh, fortunate enough to get our first job done and then on our last day, which was uh, Friday, they decided, well, we'll just give you another job and uh, we teamed up with another, chur another church that had joined SWAP uh, with us that week and we helped them do underpinning. Now, if you haven't done underpinning, it's a, it's a chore. Uh, but uh, I, we, we had finished this job uh, right near lunch and I had stopped uh, to take a bathroom break and I walked inside their house and they, uh, our homeowners, uh, they were a little secluded. They didn't interact with us very much so I tried to get a conversation going. And one thing I noticed about their home was they had security cameras on every corner, every exit, uh, and just to make sure uh, that they were safe and protected. And they had the TV monitor uh, for these security cameras right next to their TV, and they always had an eye on it. And I asked them uh, why they felt like they needed to have these security cameras, and they said they just weren't trusting of people because uh, McDowell County has large drug problem and uh, they just didn't know their neighbors quite as well as they would have liked to and they had people steal some garbage cans from them and they it was just really eye-opening to uh, see just a few hours away these people are uh, stricken with po poverty and when coal is your number one uh, job and it gets taken away and uh, as the world leans away from it to, f to find renewable energy, it, ju it affects a lot more people than I had realized, and I think a lot of other people don't realize it as well, that uh, even though we're trying to move away towards that type of energy and better energy, uh, it does affect and has a pretty wide effect on not only one family, but a whole town and a whole state. So as Hannah touched on a little bit, there were a lot of no trespassing signs up. Um, it's probably safe to say the majority of houses actually had them. Uh, and whether it was because they were empty or like the people eating swap speculated, maybe it was the drug activity, I don't know, but there was a lot of them. Um, but the house that we were working at, that I was working with, uh, Andre, Hannah, Thad, um, they had a, a welcome flag and a welcome sign which was just so special because in, con in contrast, the houses directly next to theirs all had a no trespassing signs. And it, it reminded me almost of the we're glad you're our neighbor signs, um, which we can kind of take for granted how welcoming our community is and it's to the point that it's almost expected. Um, and it's not until you go into an area where this is rare that you realize how special that welcoming is. And it's definitely an experience that's gonna stick with me.